And once again, uh, good afternoon or good morning. This is Una Daly, um, the director of the Community College Consortium for OER, and welcome to our winter 2018 OER degree community meeting. And um, I'm here with Fran and uh, Richard Sebastian. Uh, Richard's going to be uh, silent today due to uh, due to uh, recovering from um, um, a cold. Um, and besides all the updates about what's happening with ATD and the OER degree initiative, um, we're going to have a focus on um, what colleges are doing around creating student awareness of OER and the OER degrees. And um, eight of you have uh, volunteered to share. So that's going to be uh, a, a big part of today's meeting. And um, thank you to everyone who volunteered. and. Um, we hope that this is really useful for you. We'll have a little talk at the end about what's happening in this uh, around spring webinars and also um, spring conferences, because I know a number of you are attending those conferences and presenting, and we'd like to share that information with folks. All right. Here's a picture of all the usual suspects. And um, I just went over the agenda, so. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Fran to give you um, all the news about ATD and the OER degree initiative. Thank you, Una. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm just going to go over a couple of things before we jump into, I'm hearing from you, about the um, initiative and what's going on. So we are hiring a coordinator uh, to work with uh, myself and Richard um, on the degree initiative here at ATD in Silver Spring. Um, so there is a link to the position description in the PowerPoint. So hopefully once uh, the recording goes out, you'll be able to click that. You can also find that description on our website, the Achieving the Dream website. Um, so we're hoping that this person can start before April or by April, um, and they'll be working primarily on project management sort of things and keeping us all on task um, and a lot of administrative duties that have to do with the grant. So we're excited about um, this new person coming along. Um, also coming up very, very soon is DREAM, which is Achieving the Dreams uh, National Conference that happens every year in February. Um, so I'll be talking about that a little bit in a second. And then also the OER Degree Initiative Summit, which will be in Miami. And I'll go over a couple of those uh, details in a second too. So next slide, Una. Okay, so before we get into the fun things um, with conferences and all, I just wanted to go over the Lumen deadline dates again with everyone. So um, to make sure everybody is clear, March 15th uh, was the deadline, or is the deadline, excuse me, for the fall courses um, for faculty members who are off uh, during the summer. And then June 15th is the deadline for faculty members who are able to respond to feedback and make changes um, during the summer. So if you all are missing or a little bit behind or have any questions, please let myself and Richard know. Um, and then we can make sure that everything with Lumen is on task. Okay, next slide. Oh, Richard put the position description for the coordinator in the chat box for people who are interested. Um, so now on to the SRI data collection dates. Uh, just so you all know, and you all can see on this grid here, the, the deadlines and the dates, the tracking for the data collection. Um, so we are, I can't believe it's already 2018. Um, so we are uh, around the January 29th date for the section level data. The student level data um, is coming up in February, and then the cost data also in February. So this is just something to have in your back pocket, especially for the people who, um, are part of the research study and the data, I mean, and the, excuse me, and the cost study. Um, so we know that a lot of these dates don't align with your calendars or your semester calendars. Um, so we just want you to make sure that you talk with your site liaison. So um, whoever's been working with you from SRI on data collection, make sure you check in with them if you have any questions. Okay, next one. Okay, so the Dream Conference um, is going to be February 20th through the 23rd in Nashville, Tennessee. If you have not registered, I really encourage you to come if you have not been before. It's a great experience and a lot of um, your fellow community college colleagues will be there. Um, we're going to have a OER meetup on Thursday night. 
uh, at 5.30 p.m. and it will be in the program booklet. So once we get the room and all that information public, um, and that meetup is for the grantees and it's also for anyone who's at DREAM who's interested in learning more about OER, talking with you all. They would have seen a few, all, few of you present. Um, so it's a chance for them to connect with you. So it's a good networking opportunity as well. So there are a couple of OER themed sessions this year that we're excited about. Uh, Richard and David Wiley will be holding a pre-institute workshop um, called Beyond Cost, Improving Student Engagement with OER Enabled Pedagogy. Um, so that is for a fee. Um, and that will be on the get my date right. On Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, Tuesday the 20th. Um, then we have a couple of the grantees presenting and some actually non-grantees, um, but people who are involved in the OER space who will be presenting. Um, we have one from Southwest Technical Junior College, one from Passaic Community College. Uh, that's actually a poster session. The poster sessions will be set up on Tuesday. Uh, they will be fully manned and staffed by uh, representatives on Wednesday. If you have any questions, you can make sure you stop by on Wednesday. Una, you can go to the next slide. Um, and the actual concurrent sessions, uh, we have a few. Uh, Montgomery College is uh, conducting one. Hostos is doing one. Um, we are, ATD is doing one. It's going to be a panel discussion. And Richard is going to moderate that. And then Southwest Tech, excuse me, Southwest Texas Junior College is going to have another concurrent session. So the majority of these sessions, just so you know, though, are on uh, the same day. So we want to make sure you pick one uh, that's of interest to you or feel free to move around uh, to a couple of them. Okay, next slide. So on to the big event, uh, the Degree Initiative Summit. It's gonna be April 3rd through 5th. I think that we've told everyone um, when we had our check-ins after the annual reports were due. Uh, so it's gonna be in Miami, Florida. The hotel is gonna be the Miami Marriott Biscayne Bay. So we're gonna have a room block um, for all of the grantee teams. The registration website is gonna be live later this week. Um, so I'm going to send out that information to all of you so you can register. You'll see the draft agenda uh, so you'll know how to time your days. Um, and one thing that we're going to incorporate that's new this year is um, these rapid fire updates from all of the grantees. So we're hoping to have very short, just you tell us everything that's going on. Um, in your grant right now, things you want us to know, highlights, lowlights, everything. Um, and we'll give you, we'll give you a, um, a time window to sort of just stand up and tell everybody in the room what's happening. Um, and it also is an opportunity to celebrate you. Um, so if things are going extremely well, it's a good time to let your colleagues know what's, you know, what's working. Um, this year, we're also opening the summit up to non-grantees. So we're splitting the agenda, uh, the beginning part of the agenda on the 3rd. We're going to begin at 1 p.m. on the 3rd, um, and then the non-grantees will be invited to um, start arriving around 4.30 uh, on the 3rd. So we'll have a, a good chunk of time that's grantee only, and then after that, the non-grantees will be there to intermix with all of you so that you can learn from one another. Um, and you can share stories about what's working, um, strategies that they're using, um, especially as we're coming towards the end of the grant when money will cease to exist. It's um, helpful to talk to people who did not have a chunk of money and how they're actually making things work. Um, so we're going to have joint programming with non-grantees and we're going to have times where it's just you all and the non-grantees will have some sessions and um, programming just for them as well. So that is all I have. Uh, Una, were we doing questions now or did you want to wait till the end? Um, I think we can take a few questions. Um, okay. Right if people have them? Yeah, absolutely. I know I went kind of fast. Does anybody have any questions about any of the things I talked about? And we have somebody in the background who's typing really fast, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, you know, I think one thing we haven't done at the summits before, Fran, mm -hmm. is the grantee rapid fire updates. Yeah, um, that's new. And did, I, 
I wonder if anyone has any questions about that. And I, I'm not sure you might have said how many minutes they have, but I, I, I can't recall if you did say how many minutes each. Um, how many minutes is it again, Richard? So I think we, um, so don't hold us to this yet because right. we have to do it more <coughs> tag your time. But uh, so we got, you know, about 38 grantees. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's going to be five minutes or less around there. So, so really like a very, we'll send out like a structured yes, um, I will. points to hit. Um, uh, so we just want to get like the real most germane things that you want to share. So kind of about the institution, um, about, you know, kind of like we did, um, at the kickoff, all the colleges provided a, <clears throat> you know, a logo, uh, their information about their college, their degree, things like that. So kind of like a summary slide and, and they'll have just a few minutes to provide a kind of a, a overview, a quick overview, highlight um, summary. So the, so, so the goal is to, to really share the most germane information and to follow up if you need to with, with, your, with your colleagues uh, if you want to find out more. Yeah, I'm glad I asked Richard because during the planning, I keep wanting to give you all 30 minutes each, and that's not correct. There's 30 minutes total you know, for we'll each be, one of the time slots. We'll be in Miami for two weeks. Not yeah, that, that's, right. We'll be there forever. Um, so uh, Quill has a question. Um, is there a sense of the sessions? So yes, um, we are thinking broadly, and we're still trying to nail down um, all of the speakers, but we're thinking of sustainability since we know that's very important as we come to the end of the grant. Um, we're going to have conversations about platforms. Um, we're also gonna be talking about equity. Um, we're gonna be talking about faculty engagement and student engagement um, and communications. So how do you get the word out about OER? If, if you, uh, Quill or anyone, if you do have, so, you know, if you heard that list that Fran just gave you and, um, have others have suggestions for topics, you know, it's not too late. Um, but uh, uh, we're, we're trying to think ahead about kind of the, the core things that um, colleges have been asking about, have been inquiring about and, and need to know as they kind of move into kind of the final uh, end game, I suppose, for the, for the mm -hmm. grant. But yeah, please send us any, any ideas that you have. Oh, great. Um, are there any other questions? Nope. Okay. And if you do have questions, feel free to contact myself or Richard um, by email and we will get back to you. And again, I'm going to be sending out the registration for the summit, the website and all of that information, hopefully by the end of the week, if not by Monday. Great. Well, thank all you. Right. Thank you. And Richard, and you know, you can continue to put questions in the chat box too if uh, questions arise as, you're, as we're continuing. And so um, I wanted to mention a couple of things that are coming up, um, which is Open Education Week. Um, and that is the first week of March. And we had quite a number of grantees who participated last year. Um, and actually, I'm going to ask Liz, uh, my assistant, if she'll put the link in the window for uh, the blog posting for Open Education Week last year, um, if you can find that, Liz, for us. Um, um, a number of you did really um, interesting things on your campus. So there's, there's two pieces to Open Ed Week. One is to help you raise awareness on your campus. Uh, there's a lot of support in terms of activities and resources that you can um, obtain from this website uh, um, to um, have local events on your campus around um, OER awareness for both faculty, students, and staff. Um, the other piece is uh, more the showcase piece, which um, we'd like to help you with, which is showing um, some of the great work you're doing to colleagues around the country and in, and in fact around the world. And so we are setting up a time slot on Wednesday, March 5th, which is right smack in the middle of Open Ed Week, um, where we're going to provide 30-minute slots and we'll record these. Um, around OER degree showcases. Um, and we will have a sign up list shortly. We, <laughs> we ran into some issues with you book me, but we'll have a sign up sheet and um, we'd love to work with you uh, around uh, uh, collecting the time and, um, and letting you present. And we will record these as well. 
And so with your permission, we will also post these on our website as part of our OER case studies. So um, let us know if you're interested, because I think this is a great opportunity. Um, and as, as you know, we already have six case studies and a number of you are working on case studies for us and we'd love to post those as soon as you're ready um, as well. And those are, um, as you can see on this slide here, there's, a, there's simply a template with five, five and a half questions on it that we ask you to answer and then we do a little um, editing for you uh, with your permission and then we post it. Um, and it's, it's great. I know that Fran and Richard uh, like to look at these, um, these case studies and, and you know, get more details on the great work you're doing. So now we're just heading into the main uh, part of our meeting, I think, uh, which is where, um, an, which is an opportunity for um, grantees who um, had the time um, to share and, pr and produce a few slides around the work that they're doing for creating student awareness of OER degrees. And Fran mentioned how important communications are um, in getting the word out to students and how do you reach out and do that um, so that the students that you're, uh, particularly students that you're targeting, um, perhaps students um, you know, with the ATD grant, we're focusing on um, students who are traditionally um, underrepresented students in uh, and who have trouble completing their degrees. So it's important that um, we share strategies and figure out what works. Um, because we know that there is a certain segment of the student population that's quite easy to reach. They're already um, you know, in a, in a good position. So we, we want to look at alternative strategies and eight of you volunteered to share what you're doing. And so I, I really thank you for that. And um, we're going to um, hear from everyone now. And first up is Jennifer from uh, Housatonics Community College. And Jennifer, can I move the slides for you? Yes, you can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm Jennifer Nohai Seaman. I'm from Housatonics Community College. And I did want to let you guys know that um, Connecticut Community Colleges, along, there are 12 of us, along with four four years. And we're all in the same system. And soon, uh, very near future, the 12 community colleges will become one community college and with 12 branches. So we're all on this one banner system. So if I do anything, it's gonna be changed in other places very soon. So we couldn't do a whole lot. Um, what I originally had in my mind that I wanted to do on banner, in that click down menu where it says instruction type, you know, you can have, I know it's a little blurry, so I apologize for that, where you can pick whether you want an online class or a, a traditional classroom, or kind of a hybrid, there's multiple choices there. I, in my mind, I wanted it also to say OER in that menu. And then from there, students can just have the list of all OER at Housatonic, uh, at Housatonic Community College. However, that's, that's not how it went because I, like I said, I have to get system permission for that. And that's, we're looking to do that, but um, we're just getting started with combining our community colleges. So, um, Una, if you want to go to the next slide. <clears throat> All right, so how we did it was actually much easier, um, not for the secretary that did it, but for, for us as a school. Whenever a course um, was listed as OER within the degree, um, we've only listed the degree courses so far. There are many other OER courses on campus, but for the degree right now, all we did was, you can see right there, it says Intermediate Algebra uh, OER. We just attached it to the name of the course. And that was, like I said, not very simple for the secretary that had to do it, but I gave her all the CRN numbers and she put those in there um, as OER. Those were ready about a week into um, signing up for courses. So I think we started uh, November 1st was the first day you could sign up for courses in spring. And about a week later is when this was ready to go and um, labeled. Our, what we want to definitely do in the future is have those labeled and ready to go on the first day to sign up for courses. 
And once, um, I think we decided about nine weeks into the semester, those OER labels will be removed so that we don't have that OER appearing anywhere else, like a transcript by accident or something of that nature. So for right now, they're on there when they sign up for the courses, but not later on in the semester. So that's, that's where we're at right now. And that's all I really had to say. Does anybody have any questions? Search for the term. Um, you know, I don't know. I see this question from Peter. I don't think you can just search OER like that. You have to pick a course. You know, you have to pick mathematics or you have to pick, um, you know, art or whatever um, courses you want to take. And then you'll see the list and you can see that some of them aren't OER um, and then some are listed as OER. You're welcome. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that, Jennifer. Um, and I, I know that, um, you know, a number of states have actually legislated uh, the requirement to put this in uh, the course right. education system. So California, Washington, Oregon, and Texas. So it's great to hear that, you know, you're doing this at Housatonics and it, um, you know, without the, uh, the, the prodding from your legislature. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. And it, um, very interesting to hear about uh, the changes in Connecticut around um, your community college system as well. All right. Next up, I'd la like to ask Lida Kaiser. She's the Director of Grants and the Title IX Coordinator at Lord Fairfax Community College. Hey, thanks, Una. And if you can be the person who changes my slides, that'd be great. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Um, we promote the students a couple different ways. We do the same as what you just heard. We have a notation in our student information system for a class. It actually, though, says if it, the uh, resources are $40 or less, that's a VCCS initiative. But the interesting thing is that when you're in our course catalog and there's a choice to click on textbook information, if it's an OER class, so if it, in other words, if there's nothing to buy at the bookstore, when you click on that, what the student sees is a thing that says no information available. So we have to work a little bit harder on how to address that issue because, of course, that goes right to our bookstore site and uh, the bookstore might have some thoughts about how much they want to put in there. Um, the second is we have some plasma screens around campus. We have an electronic sign. We have a rotating promo on our website, and I'm going to show you these in a second. Uh, there are places that we can put information out there that students will see. Those are sometimes a much more subliminal way to just get the idea of open education resources out there in students' minds. And then I'm going to show you a course activity for our orientation course, SDV, uh, which is a college success skills class, probably like a lot of you all have. So if you want to go ahead, Una, and go forward. So here's an example of our rotating promo on our website. Students could click on that to get more information. Basically, it tells them how to sign up for courses that offer low or no cost textbooks and materials. Uh, we seldom have more than about six items on our rotating promos on our website. So it's a, it, it is a, something that, that students will see or even that just other people in the community will see as they move forward. And then like you said, you can just click on that and, and do that. And they run for a while, then we pull them off because of course they stop having a whole lot of effect if they're there too much. Okay, we can go to the next one. Um, so this is the my group activity. If When the slides come out, if you wanna cut and paste this and use it, please go right ahead and do it. Um, and Cheryl Huff at Germana, when I told her how I did this, told me it was diabolical. And I prefer to think that it, it was just a very clever way. And so I do a group activity, and which is based on problem solving to promote critical thinking, which is part of our QEP at this college. 
Um, and our problem is college textbooks cost too much. Not a single person ever says that's not a problem. Uh, and so students go through a process. They generate ideas in small groups. They analyze their ideas. They evaluate their possible solutions. And then they kind of decide what they think might be the best solution. We come back and talk about it. And they also explain how they determine the effectiveness. If they don't identify OER courses, I bring that up and I share information. I show them how to find that course. Um, we, and they come up with some actually pretty clever ideas like special scholarship funds for books or um, lending libraries for books or I mean, you name it, they come up with, with all kinds of ideas. Every time I do this in a class, students rate the OER as either number one or number two in their choices of what they consider to be the best solution for solving textbook problems. Now, I'll know that we've really gotten somewhere when I do this activity with students who are usually in their first semester and they come up with OER on their own all the time. I'll know we've, we've gotten where we need to go. But um, it is a very good way to practice their critical thinking, give them the important information in a learning format and teach them how to use it and how to look for it. So if anybody has questions, I'm uh, I'm willing to answer them. Richard said, is this in the SDV course? It's in my SDV course and then I shared it with all the other instructors. So I don't know how many of them are doing this for, the, for a problem solving activity. Um, I can certainly ask, but yeah, that's part of what we do. Thanks, Lida. I, I, I love that activity. Um, that's wonderful. And um, I did also want to mention that Lida and a number of, we had a number of other speakers, but Lida was our main speaker last March on marketing OER programs to students. So if you'd uh, like to catch that, it's on our website. And thanks to Liz for posting that. Um, the slides are there um, for that longer presentation as well. All right. Thanks for sharing, Lida. And next up is Sherilee Kushida uh, from Santa Ana College. She's the distance ed coordinator, uh, the OER degree lead, and everything OER at Santa Ana College. Thank you, Una. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could move my slides for me as well. Um, boy, this is great. I've already gotten some really great ideas I've been jotting down. Uh, here at Santa Ana College, I listed some main things that we're doing to build student awareness. I think the biggest thing is the schedule of classes that I'll show you in a moment. We also um, email our current OER students. And we always used to send out a survey toward the end of the semester to our students that use OER. But upon a suggestion from SRI that I really, really liked, um, we're emailing students um, at around registration time that are um, in an OER class, and we're emailing them telling them how they can search for OER courses for the following semester and um, to go ahead and register for it if they had a positive experience with OER and if they have any feedback to let us know about OER and uh, that they also might want to take this opportunity to thank their instructor that uses OER if they appreciate um, the use of OER. Um, we've improved how we, um, how a student can search the schedule of classes. So I don't think that that will be as important because it was kind of hidden before, but now we've got check boxes. But I do think that bringing it to the forefront of students that their instructors are going an extra mile and that you know if they have any suggestions or they want to thank them to bring this up i think that that's really uh proven to be helpful we've had faculty mention things uh that you know the student came up to them and they felt so great about that so i think that that's really uh was a very helpful suggestion i think we'll continue that um during open ed week last year we um for our activity at our college we had all of our oer faculty wear these red OER t-shirts, where in the front it says, ask me about OER, and the back says our open educational resources degree pathway. We had a summit um, earlier in the fall 
where we distributed these to the attendees. And so we asked our faculty during open ed week, could you please wear your t-shirt, um, especially to your courses in which you use OER and take this opportunity to tell your students why you chose to use OER for the course and have a quick little dialogue, you know, find out their feedback on OER, what they think, um, and if they have any suggestions for you. But mainly we wanted faculty to be able to express to their students um, why they use OER. And it's, you know, the answer is it's for the students. So um, we had different pictures. We told faculty to take a selfie with, you know, themselves wearing their t-shirt and things like that. So I think that this year, I think we'd like to do something similar, but on a larger scale. And I think I'd, I'd like to get more pictures back from our faculty. Maybe they could take a selfie with their class or something like that. So we'd like to get a little bit more involvement. To a lesser degree, we also have our website posters and we're, we're always trying to get ASG involvement, but um, probably like many of you that are community college, two-year colleges, the ASG rotation of students um, and student government, it, it rotates every, it feels like every semester, but every year. And just when we kind of what OER is about, we've got a new group of students. So that really, um, I don't want to say it's problematic. It's not as helpful for us. So the main items are the, the top three. And um, Una, if we could go to the next slide, we'll look at um, our online schedule. So at SAC, at our district, we use Elysian uh, Datatel. And we're a multi-college district. So actually, we just got this in place for the California legislation that Una was talking about, where we um, are able to select open educational resource courses and what was required. And there's a little problem here that I have to work with our IT programmer about. It should be zero textbook cost, not zero cost textbooks. But you know, it was like such a big deal for us to finally get this change. And um, he changed it in one area, but not another. I just, I'll, I'll have him go back to this, but it, it really was with quite a lot of uh, work that we got this checkbook change. Um, we used to have a drop down um, like you had in Connecticut, but um, we needed it more uh, front facing to have a, a checkbox for um, OER and zero textbook cost. If we were a single college district, then at the bottom you see the logos, a student would click it, and ideally I'd want them to go to our website where we have our OER degree pathway and the student could learn more about it. But because we're a multi-college district, instead, if the student hovers over those questions, what is OER, what is text, zero textbook cost, then a little um, dialogue box comes up with a two or three sentence description. So, that's about the best we can do right now. When um, the student searches for the courses, they'll see a listing of courses uh, online uh, in Datatel. And when they click on that section, I just wanted to do a little screen print of this for you. When they click on that section, they'll see the comments about it. You know, they'll see the last date that they can, um, you know, drop the course and all of that, but they'll also see this comment. So um, we put that up front for them so that they could see that there's no additional uh, textbook cost. They also will see a similar comment when they click on that section's textbook for our bookstore link. We um, have our bookstore post a uh, similar comment there. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Well, like many of you, every year, every two years, um, we're always saying, is our print schedule ever going to go away? Because, you know, it's obsolete the minute it comes out or the minute we start planning for it, it's already obsolete. But I have started using it more to my advantage now. And uh, we have actually now we have four pages in our print schedule, uh, which is also available PDF online. But in our print schedule, we have separate pages for OER courses. So we're really excited about this now. Now I'm really excited about our print schedule because we've, we've been able to list all of our classes. And I think that it's not only great for students to see the number of OER courses, but for faculty to see this. So it makes a bigger impression, I think, for faculty to see, wow, there's so many different OER courses that we're offering. Maybe 
I should also jump on this OER train. Um, so we have those listed, and then I'm especially proud because on the back cover, our important marketing space, um, we were able to get this uh, image that you see there, Can't Afford Textbooks, and a little bit about OER. So um, that's, that's what we were able to do with our, with our print schedule and our online schedule, and I think that those are probably the two, the, the biggest um, marketing uh, aware and student awareness activities that we have that also help with faculty. So um, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer it. Wow, that's all I got to say, Shirley. That's amazing. Um, I, I love what you have done with your um, your online schedule, and um, I've seen a number of others, and yours looks to be the most complete, and I know that that's a lot of coding, um, and and the paper uh, schedule also is, is really, uh, that just is really helpful. Um, oh, thanks, and thanks, Quill. Thank you for sharing that. And I, and I know a lot of hard work went into that to make it happen. All right, next up is Tanja Connerly. Uh, she's sociology faculty at San Jacinto College and is the OER degree lead there as well. Tanja, can you hear us? I, I'm not hearing you, you might be on mute. I think I was on mute. Can you hear me now? We can, yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Una, and good afternoon, everyone. As Una said, my name is Tanja Connerly, and I am currently the OER degree lead here at San Jacinto College. Um, Una, if you can move the slides for me, that would be great. Thank you so much. I've listed a couple of, um, of venues that we use in order to target and reach our students. Um, as, a, um, <clears throat> as a faculty member, we uh, use different techniques in order to reach our students. A lot of our students are visual, more of them are hands-on. So in our making our students aware of the open books, and that is the title of our program, OER program here, we have tried to come up with different techniques in order to make sure that the students are abreast and keeping them aware. Of course, we use all of our social media, uh, social media Facebook, Instagram, um, videos. And when I say videos, we literally have marketing videos, uh, screens that shows a loop of a video recording of our open books that's located in our Student Success Center. Uh, we also have posters, um, all around uh, our campus, especially we're partnering with the library and reference to our open books. So we have posters and flyers, uh, not uh, all around all three of our campuses, as well as the library. Um, in reference to um, students, when they register, either they can register online or they can meet with an ed planner or a counselor. So when they register online, of course, they can go into our banner system and they can click on uh, Course Finder. And if they search for open books, it will list all of our open books courses. And from there, they can literally select the classes that they would like to take. If they are meeting a counselor face-to-face -face or an educational planner face-to-face, -face, um, we have flyers literally flyers in each counselor's office because there's not enough room for us to put posters. So they have like flyers um, that's in like an eight and a half by 11 frame uh, in order for them to be able to remind them and cue them to let our students know about uh, our open books uh, program. We also have a career magazine where we target a, um, a, a career every month but inside of the magazine is a advertisement for our open books program as well. When, our st when we have new students to arrive here at our college, we have a new student orientation. And this is probably the largest venue that we have because the students are very excited and they are basically saying, well, what is the catch, a free textbook? But um, so we go on and we introduce it to them, explain it to them, uh, how this is a degree plan and how you can obtain an associate degree without purchasing a book. So I think that that new student orientation and literally seeing someone there to give them the 
additional information uh, is an eye catcher for them. Uh, Una, may I have the next slide, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, no matter whether you're teaching a face-to-face -face or online class, it has to be listed into our Blackboard site. So we have made a tab for our open books in order for a student to be aware of all the classes that they can take uh, that's pertaining to um, open books. So we've, we've tried to, like I said, again, hit all venues where we think that they would um, go out in order to search for their class. Una, if I can have the next slide, please. Yes, just, there we go. Thank you so much. And this is the flyer. This is just a top of the flyer that I was talking about that we have in our counselor and our ed planner's office. And basically it lists all of our classes that we offer. Of course, you can't see all of them, but it lists all the classes that we offer. Uh, and so again, all of this is these flyers here, we pass them out at our new student orientation and they're also located in our counselor's office. So that is all I have from San Jacinto College today. Great, thank you so much, Tanja. And I'm so thank glad you. you brought up the counselor uh, role in this and also the new, st new student registration. Um, and I think this is the first time I've heard about new student registration um, outreach around OER. Um, so I think those are all really helpful things if other folks haven't heard about those yet. Oh, thank you. All right, you had a question here from Lida um, in the chat window and she asked, Do you, does your email blast go to all students? Do you get any negative pushback? Um, the most things that we get, and yes it does, um, go to all students. Um, the only negative, well, it's really not a negative, it's just more um, inquiries and reference to tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, I can't believe the books are free, what's the catch? Uh, is it going to transfer to my four-year university? Uh, and those are just questions that, I mean, legitimate questions that I would ask, too, if somebody would say, you know, free or low-cost books. Uh, but I, we haven't really received any negative feedback. Good to hear. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, um, Tanja. And we're going to move on to our next speaker because we've got so many great speakers. I want to make sure we include everyone. Uh, Quill West is up next, the Open Education Project Manager at Pierce College District and also our CCCOER president. Quill? Hi. Hi, everyone. And Una, uh, there's one slide. Uh, would you mind advancing to it? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more theoretical and not show things off partially because um, I'm in a really great carrot and stick situation at Pierce College right now. Um, so our state just passed a law last year that says that we have to label OER courses, um, which is lovely. Um, and, and it makes a great stick if we want to force things on people, people. but um, this is really much more for me labeling open courses and telling our students about open courses is much more about doing the right thing than it is about doing what the law says. Um, so we're in this system, we're in the middle of a change from a legacy system that doesn't have a lot of capability into a people soft system that's coming with some state defined concepts of what OER means. So um, as we begin to tell our students what o which classes are OER, which we do right now mostly through word of mouth with our counselors. So I meet with counselors and we talk about which classes are open and here's a list. I give them a list every quarter <laughs> um, and then they're able to advise students using that list. Um, and we do general announcements in our college success course about OER and being strategic about which classes um, you don't want a textbook for and which ones you might want a textbook for. Um, we try, or traditional textbook is a better way to put that. Um, <laughs> we um, right now are talking about how do we get this information in our schedule in a way that's going to make sense to students? Because we're really invested in this term OER um, and we've been using it a lot and we talk about our OER degree pathway all the time with students, but they don't necessarily know what OER means. So that's kind of one of the things that we're trying to land on now is if we're going to use the state language, which is no textbook required, um, no 
textbook to purchase, I think is actually what it says. That's um, a different definition than OER. And so it's actually changing the way we talk about open education at our institution. And I wanted to point that out to everybody that um, marketing OER might not be the road that we're going down at Pierce College eventually because um, that's not what the label says in the statewide tool, um, even though we are a state that uses OER and talks about OER a lot. Um, and then the other thing I want to point out is, as we've been talking with faculty, which is the big push we're doing right now, is to try to get faculty on board with this labeling. Um, I'm tr we're, we talk a lot about what are the incentives for faculty in um, labeling courses so students know in advance before they get into a course that's not open. So that's, um, I don't want to take up a bunch of time, but those are the kinds of things that we're trying to talk about now rather than um, labeling and coming back at it. And so this is Cheryl Lee, when you mentioned your student government, our students just finished a statewide survey in which they defined what they meant by affordable learning materials and what they mean by OER, which is a really interesting survey. I can't wait until the state board is ready to share those materials because um, some really interesting data came out of it in terms of how students define their textbook materials. So it's really interesting. Um, I'm going to let you turn it over to somebody else you know, because I'm kind of um, think that there's better things to see. All right. Well, thank you so much, Quill, for letting us know about what's happening in the state of Washington and that um, you're moving forward, but there's that you need to continue the conversation. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to turn this over to Tony DeFranco fr from uh, Tompkins Cortland Community College in part of SUNY, and he is the coordinator of Learning Technology Services. Tony? Thank you, Una. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we have a pretty elaborate system here for OER that impacts a lot of different parts of the college, but I'm going to talk specifically about how we promote this to students. Um, the college promotes OER in several ways. Uh, we have full and individual uh, faculty meetings. Um, of course, we talk about OER and we get uh, faculty excited and those who have been involved in it talk to other faculty and, and um, you know, and it becomes um, interesting to them and they want to get involved and get more information on it. Um, faculty and advisors meet with students to promote OER course options. Uh, we've had a lot of local and state media coverage, um, press releases, things like that. We're of course involved in social media as many of you folks are. Uh, we communicate with student government to let them know what we're doing, what OER is all about. And they've been very excited about it. We've been doing this a very long time so Word of mouth is probably one of the best channels of promotion we've seen. Um, we also promote it in our SIS. We use Lucian's uh, Power Campus. Uh, we have an OER course filter, which is highly visible. If we can advance, I don't know if I've got, there we go. Okay, so we wanted something that um, was highly visible. Um, you can see right in the center of the page, show only OER courses. We chose to use the term OER because it's so heavily used on campus. I know a lot of folks use different terms for it, but it's so heavily used on campus. Our students hear so much about it, uh, and SUNY uh, uses it pretty heavily as well. We're a SUNY campus that we figured we would stick with OER. We wanted to develop something that was obvious, something that was clean and simple. So when students go to the catalog in the SIS, they'll see all available sections of every course uh, both OER and non-OER, or they can just filter by OER section simply by clicking that box. So our students, again, have a pretty good idea what OER means, but for those who don't, if they want to click that link that says, what is OER, they can get an explanation there. We work closely with our bookstore in promoting OER. They've been a big part of our success, and we include in our OER description page that print copies are available at the bookstore. So again, they've been a very good partner um, with our OER efforts. Also not displayed here is um, we developed this OER tab in our learning management system, we use Blackboard, that is specific to faculty, so only faculty can see the tab. So they can peruse complete courses and adopt uh, content very, very easily. Um, our students, once they locate the courses that they want to take, um, they can click on the course descriptions. They'll also see information that reinforces that there's no textbook to buy, that the course uses open educational resources. We also apply a $10 fee for each OER course section, and that fee is mentioned on the course description page. But for students who are wondering, 
what that means, um, we actually have that description on our fees page. So we explain how the OER fees we collect are used. Uh, we included this on our fee descriptions page, and it basically says we use the OER fee for developing, maintaining the materials, uh, the platforms for hosting, and for professional development activities so that we can continue offering more and more sections of OER. And currently, uh, we have, I guess, under 4,000 students, and we have about 100 sections of uh, OER each semester. And we've got one complete degree program, uh, business program. So it continues to grow. We've had a lot of success with it, and we're looking for ways to continue to improve our processes and systems. And that is it. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. Um, and also a very um, impressive uh, course management system with, um, with the information for students. So um, I know Tompkins Cortland has been at uh, the OER uh, work for many years now and it definitely shows all right next up is kelsey smith she's a librarian at west hills community college in lemoore california kelsey hi everybody i see that james preston is here too so jump in whenever you feel like it james um if you can go to the next slide una okay so west hills college uses colleague and um california just passed a bill saying we need to designate our OER classes and they recommend using this image on the side here with the dollar sign and the book. Um, we cannot figure out how to get it into Colleague just yet. So what we did instead was put a OER comment into the course description. Um, students can search OER in the class schedule, but it's not ideal. They would have to type it in the top right hand corner there. Um, if you can go to the next slide for me. Absolutely. So what we did instead of having that little symbol was an OER comment. So you can see the screenshot there of our, one of our art classes. And that's how the OER, if you search OER pops up, it'll bring up these classes with this comment. Um, another thing that was really great that we did was our bookstore has a little comment. Now, instead of saying textbook not available, it says, uh, open educational resources are required and to see your instructor, which was awesome because I think a lot of students are buying the book um, when they didn't need to and that sort of thing. Um, some other marketing tools we're using are, of course, word of mouth. We're a smaller college, so just word of mouth from our counselors, our faculty and other students. Our counselors go to our um, OER committee meetings sometimes, so they know every section that's OER. Um, we've had a couple articles about OER in our school magazine and newspaper. And our marketing department is, is currently working on some digital ads that will go, um, I think, on the radio and possibly TV. I'm not sure. James, do you have anything to add? Yeah, they, can you, guys, you guys can hear me, hopefully. They are, um, yeah, we're in the process of kind of a marketing campaign that will go out this spring because we're launching two uh, ZTC degrees in the fall. So... We've been working closely with uh, our marketing directors on our OER committee. Great. Okay. I think that was it. Yeah, well, thank you, Kelsey and, and James, for sharing that. Um, and I, I love the um, what you mentioned about your bookstore, because I think in the past, it could be very confusing for a student when there wasn't, uh, when it had this sort of unknown book comment and so now having the bookstore put in that it's OER I think it's really helpful for students to understand that they don't have to buy a book um, that it's going to be provided that the digital link will be provided so wonderful and James also shared something about uh, t-shirts in the chat window um, that West Hills uh, College Lamore is uh, has a t-shirt site for the OER revolution and any uh, money that they make from that uh, selling of those t-shirts, um, it goes towards student scholarships. All right, and now, last but not least, we have Joseph Mould. We've just had so much great information. Um, and Joseph is gonna tell us about the work at Bay Dinant College, where he is the director of online learning. And Joseph, do you wanna share your screen? See, I think I, maybe I need to stop sharing mine. Can sure, I can share my screen if you want me to do that. Uh, I think that was the plan, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and then you can share your screen. 
And um, well, um, well, Joseph is uh, getting ready to share his screen. It's we have uh, just about five minutes officially left in the webinar, um, and after um, after Joseph's. Um, slides. We have a couple of slides about spring conferences and the CCCOER spring webinars, um, which I will share with you. And if you have a meeting uh, directly after this and have to leave, uh, we'll be sending out the slides and recording for this um, as well. So yeah, go ahead, Joseph. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm Joseph Bolden, I'm Director of Online Learning and Instructional Design here at Bay College. Um, I also have a couple of people with me from our cross-functional team. We have uh, Mark Kinney, who is our dean, and, um, and uh, also Ann Seebeck, who is a business instructor who is using an open educational resource. Um, so about student awareness, we've done a couple of different things. One of the things that we've been doing every, um, every fall semester is to have what we call a Free the Textbooks OER Rally, where we buy a lot of pizza, a lot of free food, and we give out t-shirts and we let people play video games and we do a bunch of fun stuff and we hand out flyers to our students about uh, what OERs are and what courses use OERs. And those have been pretty successful. Um, we have a big huge banner that we have in our uh, hub and uh, essentially it's where all of our student services and academic support offices are and the banner essentially has the the one url that we are using to direct students uh, and faculty to to learn about open educational resources um, and so the banner is pretty huge it's probably i don't know 10 feet long by three or four feet wide and and, and uh, our high and so it's a big banner that we use to attract attention to OERs and um, our baycollege.edu slash OER URL. We've uh, given out, these are the t-shirts that we've given out to our students. Um, we've given out hundreds of these t-shirts and the students really, really like the t-shirts. This is the front of the t-shirt. Um, I don't know if I had, this is the back of the t-shirt. So the, uh, the back of the t-shirt actually, again, has the common URL that we're directing our students to that lists every single course that we have that's using OER, but it also has links to the actual OER textbooks. So that's pretty cool. Um, another thing that we started doing was um, myself and our instructional designer, uh, we do these SOAR orientation, so it's a uh, you know, student orientation and registration that's mandatory for all of our new students. And so uh, we do a little 30-minute computer session where we talk about all of our online stuff. And during that SOAR session, we make sure to talk to our students and hand out flyers about OER and the new OER courses that we're using. So we talk to our uh, SOAR students specifically about OERs um, and they also go out via mail with their wel welcome letter too. Um, we've done uh, what we did for uh, Open Education Week uh, last year was a goose chase that our instructional designer Edie Erickson designed and goose chase is a game that you can load on your app and then you go around and you take pictures and you do these fun things to learn about open educational resources. And this group of uh, folks here did OER, you know, they kind of made their body the, the shape of the uh, letters. And then they submit all these things and the person that's done the most, uh, uh, we did, we had like, you know, first, second and third place winners. So it really helped to bring awareness to open educational resources. We've also like during the um, open educational rallies, we give away trophies and t-shirts to our faculty that have um, used open educational resources to uh, acknowledge them in front of students and, and give them some, some credit for all the hard work that they've done. Uh, some of the things that we've done to help promote a little bit more is, again, I really uh, am a big fan of the single URL that you use in all of your promotional materials on your t-shirts, on your flyers. You direct them to one place, it's a fairly simple, you know URL where they can go to learn about all the classes that we use uh, 
in all of the classes that we have. It also talks to about all of the money that we've saved, and it's also got some really cool videos on there with faculty and student testimonials. Um, and another thing we've done too is we've done email blasts. I have had IT develop um, email distribution lists just with the classes that are using OERs, and I send those out periodically uh, before the semester begins to people that are registered in those classes, letting them know that the textbooks are free uh, and that they're online. But if they want a copy, they can go buy a copy in the bookstore. Um, this is one of the videos that we had, and I'm not sure you know how good the quality will be here. Um, but it's a pretty cool video. I'm just gonna let this play for a second. Yeah, buddy. Because I mean, again, it's three hundred dollars for other books. To only pay twenty five dollars, that saves so much money. I mean, we're all broke. Everyone knows that. Book prices in the country have really skyrocketed over decades. I think over a hundred thousand dollars just in the fall semester alone was saved by students. And on occasion, I find out halfway through the semester that so and so didn't have the text because they couldn't afford. That's a hardship for students. This semester, I spent zero dollars on textbooks. The money I spent on textbooks this semester will probably be about eight hundred dollars. I didn't have any OER this year. I did last year, and it helped a lot. Like I was actually able to afford a very good calculator for my math course because I saved the money on it. Ten years from now, costs for books are just going to be less for students across the United States. And that's that's the way it should be. And Bay is going to be a leader in that. So the videos were great, and um, we've also had a lot of good press locally. We've had, uh, you know, press in our newspapers. We've had, um, you know, press also nationally in the Chronicle, of Higher, the Chronicle of Higher Education, where they talk specifically about Bay College. And uh, this student here, Danita Armstrong, was uh, spending, she spent a ton of money on textbooks and was just really appreciative to use um, open educational resources. Um, and so, so far, we have saved students almost $300,000 um, since the fall of 2016. Uh, we do have a, a complete degree pathway uh, starting in uh, last fall, fall of 2017. We have 83 credits that use um, OERs, uh, and 26 of those classes were certified through Lumen, and 31 of those courses are still OER. They haven't been certified, but people are still using the open educational resources. And we've had about 2,975 students that have benefited from our open educational resources. Um, that's what I got. Well, thank you so much, Joseph. So many great ideas in there, um, including, of course, Open ed Education Week ideas. But um, yeah, um, wow, just, just a whole slew. So um, is it okay if I share the link with everybody to this, um, to this slide share? Slide share. That we can go back and review that. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, great, I'll include that um, in there. Um, we are just about at the end of time. I wanted to um, just go back and um, just finish up here. We will be having um, monthly webinars. These are the CCCOER webinars. Um, I know that uh, Fran and Richard are organizing webinars from time to time as well, and we'll add those to our list when we get them. Um, and we have one coming up in two weeks. We're going to have Monroe Community College from SUNY talking about their OER initiative programs. And as we, as you know, and I don't know if anyone is online from Monroe today, but Monroe is also part of the um, SUNY um, ATD OER degree consortium. All righty. And um, spring conferences, there. Um, there's a lot of great spring conferences. Many of you are participating um, in these and presenting at them. Um, and there, so there's a lot of great OER happening at all of these. I have a bit.ly, a little um, link right here for spring 18 conferences. We have all the links to those and how to register and so forth. And um, we're asking folks to put in, if you know, to add your college if you're presenting there as well. Um, it's a great way to connect with others. Um, I'll just mention in February at eLearning 2018, we've got three of our colleges um, presenting that I'm presenting with, and I know that there are several other colleges going to be there as well. Uh, it's in Tucson, so of course we have um, Pima College is there, but um, I'm there with um, Broward, um, 
Florida State College at Jacksonville and uh, Bay College uh, doing a presentation, Trident of Open. I know that um, West Hills College Lemoore is there. Uh, Vera Kennedy will be presenting on her work. Um, and, and I imagine there's more of you as well. So um, a great opportunity to connect with folks um, outside um, that you normally wouldn't see. Um, we do have a time for questions now, although we have already run over five minutes, so I don't want to keep folks indefinitely, but um, I think uh, both Fran and Richard and I are here for a few more minutes. So um, if you've got any questions, please, please share those. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. I want to thank everyone for joining us today, particularly for those who presented with us and sharing all those wonderful ideas. I, I, I know that I, I got a lot of uh, great new ideas um, to um, put on my list for how to create OER awareness. So have a wonderful afternoon, and uh, we'll see you online soon. Thanks, Nunes. See you later. Bye-bye. Right,